We are going to use circles in an application about locating epicenter of an earthquake. So kind of got to understand some earth science. So here's a seismometer. You got to picture this as a roll of paper coming from the right. So it's feeding to the left. So this mark right over here was the first mark and then it made these and then it made these. Okay, so it's feeding in from the right to the left. The first thing that's going to hit on an earthquake is a P wave or primary wave or pressure wave. So that's the first click right there. And they were nice and put that at time zero. Then it's going to have some rumbling and then we're going to get a secondary wave or a shear wave and that's going to kick again and that time is important for us because the difference in times, the time lapse between the S and the P, the SP interval, tells us a distance away from the seismometer. Okay, So in this case, our time would be, we come over here, we follow down, it's about 36 seconds to zero. So that's how we have to read these. All right, so we've got a seismometer here in Fresno. Fresno. So write down Fresno, and you're going to have to write this time down. So we look over here at the S wave, it's at zero. Come over here to the P. I'm sorry, I'm backwards. P wave starts, and then the S wave. Um, we read down, and we got about 36 seconds, 35. It's just under 36. All right, write that down for Fresno. And we got another one. How many do we got to have? We got to have three. We have to have triangulation. So here we got Vegas again. The P wave hits at zero, and the S wave is hitting two, four, six, eight, and 39. Not quite at 40, it's got that kick right here. So 39, all right, so I'll write that down. Las Vegas, 39 seconds. We've got another one, Phoenix. P wave kicks here, peters out. S wave kicks again, right about 61. All right, so write that down, Phoenix, 61. Now we're gonna read another chart. So you've written down, you know, Fresno, 35. Vegas 39, Phoenix 61. Awesome. We've got to find the distance now using that data. So here's our chart. It relates time and I should go put time and distance. And we're in kilometers here. So we read this. We're, our, our time is 35. So 35 seconds. Find it. Here's 35 seconds. Read over to the graph. Boom. And then come down. That is 340 kilometers. Write that down. Now we do Vegas. 39 seconds. Come up. Find 39. That's five, there's nine, read across, boom, down, 380. And then 61 seconds, 61, there's 61, come across to our graph, 61, man, it's not quite the black line, it's not quite 600, so just, so we're gonna say 595. Awesome, you see got down, written down, Phoenix, Fresno, 35, 340. Vegas, 39, 380. Phoenix, 61, 595 kilometers. Now we got to graph this thing. So you're going to get a map. Boom, hey, look, a map. And you're going to get a compass, and you're going to use this scale to map those three circles. I'm going to try and do it in GeoGebra. All right, so here's my map. I've got dots on my three locations, um, Fresno, Vegas, and Phoenix. And then I've got my scale down here. Each dot is 100. So Fresno, I need to make 340. So i got to put a dot. It's about 340. So 1, 2, 340 is going to be. Come on, put a dot for me. It's hard to make it do this sometimes because of the size of the, the spacing in between there. So that's about 340. And this is going to be rough for us. So we're just going to do the best we can. Um, so I'm going to make a, use a compass, make a circle about 340, is that about 3, yeah, okay, that one from C to K, and I'm going to put that around Fresno, boom. And now I need a dot that's about 380. Um, I can't just move that one because that dictates that circle, so I'm going to hide that one. You're not going to have to do this. Um, I'm going to throw another dot down there, one, two, one, two, three. Did I make that the right size? Did I make that 280 or 380? I made that 280, didn't I? Yes, I did. All right. So let's do that again. 
One, two, three. That's going to be more like 340. There we go. Okay, so from C up to K. So we're on Fresno. Hide it. And then I need a 380 dot. One, two, three. Let's see what's now I gotta push that dot up a little bit to get more to 380. Yeah, it's about again, it's rough. We don't have perfect detail here. Uh, I better click L here. We can put that around that's Vegas, right? Alright. And we're gonna hide that just for fun. And then I need a 595 around Phoenix. So let's uh, throw that up here. Push it up to what would be like 595 and compass. I'm not gonna be able to click on that because they're right next to each other. So I gotta go make a comp, make a circle from C to M and let's put it at Phoenix. It didn't like me. C to M and put it at now nah, that didn't like that. Alrighty, try this again. C's up, where's M? Here's M. Alright, so put it from C to M at Phoenix. Bam. Hey, look at our circles. Look where they all cross. They were rough, so they're not going to have a perfect intersection. But they intersect right around LA. So our epicenter is near LA. So that's how you got to do it. You got to make circles right. So you got to use the time lapse. So let's go back again. We use the time from the P to the S. We get on a chart that relates time and distance. And we find the distance that that time means. So 40 seconds would mean, boom, just under 400, about you know 390. So that is how you find. And then you got to graph it uh, using a compass and uh, a scale.